Chikitsa. Welcome on board, Umesh Chaudhary, the Vice Chairman and MD at Tidagar Rail Systems, to talk about exactly what's happening in the company right now. Mr. Chaudhary, great to have you today on ET Now. And let's first talk about all the curiosity around your company, your rollout of India's first Made in India driverless train set for Ahmedabad Metro. And that's clearly been a very key milestone for you. Tell me, how does this project strengthen your uh, technological capabilities and position you for upcoming metro opportunities across the country? Good morning. Uh, pleasure being with you as always. Uh, so, yes, it was a very uh, important moment for us. In fact, uh, last uh, couple of weeks, we had two important uh, projects that came to light uh, or came, became successful. One was the diving support craft which was commissioned by the Indian Navy which was the first of its kind uh, and was very well uh, received by the Indian Navy. So that's on our shipbuilding side. And the second is Ahmedabad had earlier imported trains. So this was the first Make in India train that Ahmedabad received, not the first Make in India train that India produced as such. But, uh, you know, uh, as far as we are concerned, it was a very special moment for us because the Honorable Chief Minister of Gujarat uh, came toward our factory uh, saw what we are doing in our factory to develop capabilities, which are not only for today, but for tomorrow, uh, in terms of catering to the global market, making ourselves uh, competitive and capable for uh, catering to the global market. So it, it has been a, a pretty exciting and a pretty humbling week or uh, couple of weeks for us. Uh, uh, is the, hi, this is Harsha. Is the is the order traction picking up faster than you would uh, anticipate in terms of uh, the 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 pickup and the traction that you're seeing from uh, the demand side of things? So we operate in two different businesses, Harsh. One is the freight, one is the passenger. As far as the freight is concerned, we are expecting new tenders to come out uh, hopefully in 2026. Uh, we had given out our uh, our vision document or our strategic plan a uh, couple of months ago or maybe a month ago, wherein we've shown that we have about uh, one year of visibility as far as the freight uh, rolling stock is concerned. But on the passenger side, we have three sub-verticals, three SBUs as we call it. Uh, one is the Metro, the Vande Bharat and the Propulsion. For Metro, we have order books up to 2028. And uh, the traction is also very, very strong. And this is uh, despite of a very, very steep, almost like a vertical ramp up from 12 coaches last year. We are looking at doing 100 this year and 220 next year and going up to 300 the year after. So with that also, we have a full order book. And the same is the story with Vande Bharat, where we have an order book of up to 2031. So there is a very strong uh, backlog that we have. Plus there is a very strong uh, order book pipeline that we are seeing, particularly in the passenger side. It's quite interesting. I want to probe a little bit more <laughs> about the Ahmedabad uh, metro train set, Sumesh, because, you know, you've already achieved 70 to 75 percent localization, right? Tell me, how yeah. does higher indigenous content improve cost competitiveness, execution timelines, and of course, you know, your ability for uh, winning future bids as well? <laughs> So it is, uh, it is actually all of what you said, you know, it makes you much more competitive, it makes you much less dependent, you know, the whole, uh, the theory and the policy of becoming Atmanirbar, uh, because, you know, uh, earlier when we saw Delhi Metro come up, uh, there were coaches flown in uh, from, uh, you know, the, I mean, the entire coach was brought in in a cargo aircraft because uh, of the time constraint. So from there to where India has come today, thanks to primarily the Make in India policy and the Atmanirbhar Bharat policy, which is actually the reason why companies like us uh, got an opportunity to uh, work hard and prove ourselves. This, is, uh, this has been a game changer for the country. And our focus, our target would be to increase this Make in India content to almost 90-95% and that we will be able to achieve because we are doing a lot of backward integration, whether it is on the propulsion side, whether it's on the component side, all of that. So it will make us much less dependent on global supply chain, which, you know, in today's world and age, uh, it's, it's uh, not only commercial, but it's also geopolitical sometimes. Uh, it will make us more cost competitive. And of course, you know, uh, we believe as a company and I believe as an individual that India is one of the largest railway networks. India is really spending so much on its infrastructure. Why should India not become an exporter or a global uh, 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 supplier for uh, 
railway rolling stocks and railway components. So that's what our target would be. Hmm. Okay. Uh, with regard to freight, is there at all a slowdown that you're seeing? Any concerns? So uh, we would uh, not say that uh, we are very happy that the orders did not come out in 2025, but then the last tender was finalized in 2022-23, and it was a three-year tender. So, you know, we were expecting that the tender should come out by end of uh, FY26, which is either the December quarter or Q3 or Q4. And we believe that this should come in, you know, uh, quarter to quarter disruptions might happen. But on a longer term basis, the target of the railways is of, of getting to 3 billion tons of cargo movement is intact. We have been reading in the papers about the new dedicated freight corridors that are being planned by the railways. So there is no other way for India but to increase the railway share of the cargo movement. Uh, both from the perspective of India becoming a $5 trillion economy, but also becoming a cost-effective economy. Today, the logistics cost of India is almost 13 14% of its GDP. And the stated policy of the government is to bring it down to a single digit. And that can only happen if there is a movement from road and air to rail and water. So, so uh, give us a pulse as to how this, uh, this plays out going forward. 2025 has been a tough year. Does 2026 get better? And if so, how quickly? Do you expect it to happen in H1 calendar year 2026, H2? Uh, and, and of course, as part of your interactions, what is it that you're getting a sense of? Why the delays? So uh, our uh, sense is that some of the line uh, capacity expansions that were planned got delayed slightly. Uh, some of the doublings or some of the yards, etc., that has been uh, now, that is now getting commissioned. We know that the DFC is likely to get commissioned in the next year, so that will free up a lot of capacity, uh, particularly the Western Corridor. So all of that will really uh, there is no dearth of cargo, there is no dearth of traffic that the railways can carry. It's only the small bottlenecks that need to be uh, removed for the railway uh, to be able to carry much more cargo. We have already seen, for example, the bulk carrying of cement policy that was launched by the railway ministry uh, a few weeks ago. So the railways have already started, I think they have already changed their gears and they've already started attracting more and more traffic because all these bottlenecks are now getting removed and uh, capacity enhancement of the railways is happening. So I believe that it's only a question of a few quarters. But fortunately, we for these quarters, we already have the orders uh, with us. So uh, as we have given out in our strategic plan, the railway freight business is going to be range bound between, say, 700 wagons on the lowest side to 1,000 wagons per month on a uh, higher side. So we do not see that this will go beyond 1,000 wagons or below 700 wagons uh, in the future. A timeline for pickup? Is there a pulse you have, Mr. Chaudhary? We are already at about 800 wagons from now. So okay. uh, this month itself, we will be doing 800 wagons. And and the order pickup, uh, uh, give us a sense, H1 calendar year or H2 calendar year 2026? I would say H1. H1. So it, it's, it's just a delay of a quarter or two. That's right. That's what we believe. The other thing also, uh, you know, Amesh, I wanted to talk about was just ahead of the budget, what kind of CapEx outlay are you anticipating this time? So, uh, again, the railway CapEx has to be seen in a slightly different perspective. So, you know, what happens is about 80% of the CapEx is in building capacity, which is tracks, uh, signaling, locomotives, and 20% of the CapEx is for utilizing that capacity, which is wagons, coaches, and rolling stock, and so on. So, uh, we we know we, uh, uh, apart from looking at the total number of the capex, we need to see the quality of the capex or so the allocation of the capex. Track once built will not get rebuilt again, but the rolling stock will have to be uh, procured year after year. So on one side, we are expecting the railways to enhance their uh, capex for building the new dedicated freight corridor, for example, or the new high speed corridors. Uh, that the railways have uh, been speaking or the government has been speaking about. But on the other side, the uh, CAPEX that has actually gone in over the last 10 years can only be utilized and serviced if the railways increase their traffic. 
And we believe that the CAPEX allocation in that uh, spectrum is not going to get disturbed anytime in the future. I'm not talking about this year. I'm talking about the next uh, 10, 20 years. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Chaudhary, if I were to look at this from a three-year perspective, you are currently at 800 wagons. You have capacity for 1,000. Where does the wagon capacity go? That's my first point. And, uh, and you've got very good visibility, at least on Metro, Vande Bharat and the like, which you've spoken about. Can you, by any chance, ramp up production there to kind of pull back on the FI28 and FI31 timelines that you have in terms of fulfilling orders? Give us a sense of that. Sure. So as far as the wagon is concerned, we see this to be a range-bound business. I always say that this is a business at cruising altitude. You know, I don't see much of uh, uh, of uh, turbulence uh, or ups and downs there, at least for the next three, four years, till the next spate of the power plants or the, the next big growth in the railway uh, traffic movement comes in, uh, primarily on account of the thermal capacity that comes in. As far as the passenger is concerned, that is going to be the real takeoff business for us. Uh, where we were at 12 cars last year, we'll be at about 100 cars this year, going to 200 next year. So, you know, that's the kind of ramp up. For Vande Bharat, uh, we were zero last year. We would be at about, uh, in FI27, we should be at about 32 cars, going up to 384 cars in FI28-29. So, and the capacity that we are creating uh, up to 2030, we should be getting to about 800 to 1,000 uh, uh, cars between Metro and Vande Bharat combined. We should get to about 800 to 1,000 car uh, per year capacity, which is uh, much larger than our freight business uh, has ever been. Right, understood. Okay, Umesh, great to have you on the show today. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much.